Welcome back to Anatomy on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. This is going to be the third video in a set of three videos on visual physiology. In the previous two videos, we talked about all the cells of the retina, photoreceptor cells, bipolar cells, and ganglion cells. We talked about how in the light we have a sequential order of activating or inhibiting different cells. So in the light, we have photoreceptor cells being hyperpolarized, which causes inhibition of the bipolar cells, and the inhibition of these cells produces default activation of ganglion cells. And remember that ganglion cells have axons continuous with the optic nerve. So in this video, we're going to conclude with talking about how those signals from the ganglion cells ultimately travel down the optic nerve and how they go throughout the brain. All right? So let's start. We talked about, in order to perceive light, ganglion cells must be activated. The ganglion cells have to be depolarized. But in the dark, ganglion cells were hyperpolarized or inhibited. So if we go back to this slide right here, we notice in the dark, ganglion cells are inhibited. And that ultimately has to do with, in the dark, photoreceptor cells are depolarized, which seems backwards, but that's how it is. And being depolarized or activated, the photoreceptor cells activate the bipolar cells, which are by nature inhibitory. And so if you activate an inhibitory cell, they will inhibit the next cell, which is the ganglion cell. And so that's why in the dark you don't perceive any light. These ganglion cells are inhibited. So in order to have perception of light, if there's light, you have to have activation of these ganglion cells. Okay? So in the light, the bipolar cells were inhibited because the photoreceptor cells were hyperpolarized. And so bipolar cells become inhibited, and that's going to cause activation of the ganglion cells. Now, remember, we're looking at this layer right here. This is where the retina is. And remember, those ganglion cells, which are these gray cells right here, notice their axons become continuous with the optic nerve. That's what that, this actually leads to right here. Okay. So eventually these axons become continuous with the optic nerve, which is all of this right here. This is the optic nerve which goes back from the back of the eye posteriorly and is going to go toward the brain. Right? So the axons of the ganglion cells converge and become the optic nerve, which is also cranial nerve number two, or II. Okay, so that's very important. And remember that there is a cranial nerve, too, or an optic nerve, from each eye. We have a left one and we have a right one. And both of those optic nerves are going to converge and decussate at the optic chiasma. So what does decussate mean? Remember, decussate means to cross over and kind of form an X. All right? And that's going to occur at a structure called the optic chiasma. So over here is the left eye, here's the right eye. Remember, we're still doing from the patient's perspective, so this is left over here. Now here's the optic nerve of the left eye in yellow. Here's the optic nerve of the right eye in blue. Notice at the optic chiasma, not all of the fibers are going to cross over, but some do and some don't. So that means on both sides of the brain, we actually have some from the left and some from the right. But some of them do decussate and they cross over. Now, anterior to the optic chiasma, they're just optic nerves. But posterior to the optic chiasma, where they cross over, everything from here on out is what we call an optic tract. Okay? And the optic tracts are going to project posteriorly toward the thalamus. Okay? They're going to project posteriorly toward the thalamus. And specifically, it's going to be a nucleus of the thalamus called the lateral geniculate nucleus. And one of those parts of the brain that information is sent to from the lateral geniculate nucleus of the thalamus is the primary visual cortex. Okay? Uh, the projections from the thalamus are called optic radiations. And notice that they are projecting to the primary visual cortex, which is in the occipital lobe of the brain. Recall that the occipital lobe is the visual part of the brain. Okay? And so with the primary visual cortex, this simply detects whether or not you have vision, whether or not you're seeing light, seeing anything. Okay? If you have a lesion of the primary visual cortex, you have blindness. Okay? 
but the primary visual cortex does not identify what you're seeing. It just detects that you're seeing something. So right in front of my computer right here, I have a can of A&W root beer, right? My primary visual cortex just perceives that I'm seeing things. I'm seeing my computer, I'm seeing the can of soda. But the primary visual cortex does not identify that as a can of soda. It does not identify it as a can of root beer. Really, that's the job of the visual association area. Remember, associations areas, they put a name with a face, so to speak. Okay? So the visual association area allows me to identify this as a can of soda. Right? If I had a lesion of the visual association area, then I would not be blind. I would just not be able to identify things, which would be very frustrating. Okay, so make sure you understand the difference between those two regions, but it suffices to say for now that some of the uh, fibers that reach the primary visual cortex will actually then transmit information to the visual association area and some other nearby areas such as the facial recognition area, which allows you to recognize faces. So hopefully everything I've talked about in, the, in this video and the previous two videos makes sense and you have a good grasp of visual physiology. In the next set of videos, we're going to cover auditory physiology, and then we'll eventually go into a brief discussion of taste and smell. So please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much.